Hi friends, my name is Apil Ahmed and in this particular video tutorial, I will show you how to get the date part from the file name in SSIS. Recently, I got a question from one of my subscriber, Lakshmi Vodu, and she asked like she has a file names like customer data underscore 10.10.21 underscore 11.56 pm dot csv. So she want to get the date part from the file and want to display in the YYMMDD format. So let's see how we can do that. I got a SQL Server table here which contains the columns like email id, first name, last name, email and gender and I got two extra columns file name and the file date okay and on my D files location I got some files like customer data underscore 10.10.21 12.10.21 so it seems like this is 10th October 2021 file and this is 12th October 2021 file and this is 11th October 2021 file so the date is in the dd mm.yy format and there is hhmm and the pm or am as well in the csv file name so let's see how we can extract the date and how we can insert this date value into the date column file date column and how we can insert this overall file name into the file name column okay so i already created a very basic ssis package which simply loads the data from this particular location into the sql server table but as of now it does not load the data into the file name and also the file date will be empty so i can just show you executing the package that this is a very basic package which is using a for each loop container with the file enumerator and simply loading the data into the sql server table if you want to know like how to create a for each loop container then i can share a link in the description of the video like how to use a for each loop container with file enumerator so the data has been loaded into the SQL Server table customer data and as of now the file name and the file date is empty. I think this particular table contains more data. So the total number of records are 1010. Okay. So now let me just truncate this particular table and try to populate the data into the file name and the file date columns. Okay. So as of now if you see the variables in this particular SSIS package then I contain only one variable which is the file path. Now let me create two more variables. The first variable I will call it as file name and the data type of course will be a string and it will contain the file name. So maybe I can just remove this one. So this is the default value that I can provide and now another column I want to create is file date. That will be the date from the file and it will be a string as well and I can leave it empty as well. Okay. So let me close this one. Now before loading the data using the data flow task what we will do we will use a script task here so let me just drag and drop the script task into the for each loop container and then i can connect the script task with the data flow task now let me configure the script task from the read only variables i will select the file path ssis variable because i want to get the value of the file path using this variable and then i will populate the data to the file name and file date according to the value from the file path so i can click on the edit script so that it can open the script editor for me and then I can write the code in the C sharp. Alright, so the code has been opened and here what I want to do I can just declare a local variable string file path and I can populate the value to the file path using the variable. So I can call the variables like dts.variables and then my variable name is file path so I can provide the value file path here dot value dot to string. Okay, so this will assign the file path value into the local variable okay and now there is one important thing because i will be dealing with the file path and file name so i can add a namespace here using system dot io input output so that i can get the some classes here okay so what i can do i can declare a variable file name here file name and i will get the file name from the file path so there is a class here path so i can use the path class path dot get file name and then I can pass the file path here. Alright. So this value will hold the file name. And now if I want to get the file name without the extension, then I can maybe declare another variable file name without extension. Okay. And how I can get this path dot file name without extension. So it will remove the extension from the file path. And I can pass the file path here all right so if you see the file path so this is the file name actually the whole file name and uh, 
if I remove the extension so this will be the final value that will be assigned to the file name without extension okay this value so now I want to get the this information like DD MM YY like this okay so what I can do I can actually use a write function here but as of now we don't have write function in the C sharp so for that we, what we can do I have some code here which can be used as a write function okay this one so how I can get this one so maybe I can copy this value file name without extension equal to I can call the write function now and I can pass this value file name without extension and what I want to do I want to get the value till this location so I can copy this value from here and for example if I paste it here and select the total number of records so these are the total 17 digits okay so what I will do I will put the value 17 here okay so what this will return this will return the data like till this particular location okay after this particular code and there is one important thing that because I'm writing some code here so we should always use a try and catch block so I can use a try block here and I will share all this code with you so that you can use it in the in environment and then in the catch block what I can do I can write some code exception ex so what will happen that if any error will occur then the package won't fail and it will log the error to the one of the file it will create one of the file and it will log the error there okay so actually I have written some code which can do the error handling so I can copy this particular code from here and let me paste it here so that it can save us some time so this will get the current date time and the current date time string variable and in this particular location d files folder location a new file will be created if any error will occur at this particular location and then what we will do in the catch block we can just write this particular code okay so what will happen that we will call this one ex okay so now what will happen if any error will occur in the try block then the control will move to the catch block and the error log underscore current date time dot log file will be created and the exception will be written to that particular file okay so now we got this particular date till here so now I want to get the date part from this particular information so I can declare a variable here I can call it string dd equal to and I can get the first two characters okay so what I can do I can copy this value and I can use a substring function so I want to get the substring and this is start the zero based starting character so I can provide the zero comma two so it will get the first two characters from this part and this will be the date part okay and similarly I want to get the mm part means the month part from this particular value so the month will start from this point okay so this is the one zero one two three so the location starting location will be three and the length will be two okay and now I want to get the yy part from this particular information so the yy value will start from this particular point so 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 so I will provide a value 6 here and this will become the yy okay and I can add two more yy here okay and now because the length of the year should be in the four digit and we are having only two digit then I can append the 20 here okay so I can append a value 2 0 here okay so now this should be fine and now what I can do I can combine the date here so I can create a concatenation date so I can declare a variable create concatenation date and I can combine all these fields like yyyy uh, forward slash plus mm plus forward slash plus dd so this will create a concatenation date okay and now what I want to do I want to assign this particular date back to the file date SSIS variable so I can assign like this dts dot variables and then the variable name is file date dot value equal to concatenation date okay and I also want to assign the file name to the file name SSIS variable file name and I can get this value file name from here alright so this is the code that will be executed when we will execute the SSIS package and it will get the date part from the file name into the file date variable and it will get the file name from the file path okay and if any error will occur then it will create a error log underscore current date time flat file into the log folder that we declared at this particular location so I can just close this one 
exit and I can click on OK and now what we can do we can go to the data flow task and inside the data flow task we can use a drive column transformation and we can add and then we can add the two new columns in the data flow so we can use the variables here so the first variable is the file name that we can use here and we can call the new column as file name and if you see the data type of this column so this is unicode but we want the data type to be non unicode so what we can do we can just convert it to dt underscore str comma 50 we want to give the length as 50 and code base 1252 so this will change the data type to varchar 50 okay now the another column will be the file date okay and we will call the new column name as file date and we want to change the data type from unicode to the date so if you go to the type cast here so there is a function here dt underscore date which can be used for the type cast so now the data type got changed to the dt underscore date so these two new columns got added to the data flow so i can click on ok and now i can connect the direct column transformation with the oledb destination and then i can configure it if i go to the mapping then these two columns file name is not mapped so i can map it and i can also map the file date as well and i can click on ok so as of now this particular table is empty and if i will execute the ssis package then it should populate the data for all the columns into the sql server table so i can go back to the ssms and if i execute the query so now you can see that this is the file name and this is the date from the file name okay so the data type for the file date is the date so you can get the date in any format from this one okay so i think that's it for today's video thank you guys for watching the video and if you like the video then please click the like button do subscribe to our channel press the bell icon and click on also that you will be notified every time i upload a new video thank you so much